So we are going to head over to our main dot storyboard and we are going to drag in some elements. So first of all, we are going to need a text field where our user can enter the value that they want to have converted. And in this case, it's going to be euros that they want to convert. And, um, and then we are going to need, or I am going to use a picker view because I think that that serves the purpose best. And then I'm going to have a button, which is going to be the convert button. I'm going to squeeze it up here. Convert. See, ba -ba -bam. make, give it a background color. I'm just going to stop that. Give it a background color. It's going to have a white text. You do whatever you want right here. I'm just going to try to make it a bit more interesting than black and white. So here I'm going to fill in my euros and it can be a great idea to set keyboard type to a number pad, which is probably the best thing to do so that your user can type in all types of characters. So make it a number pad, then have a convert button, then he can select the currency that he wants to convert to. And then I'm going to have a label to display the result. So let's drag that in and uh, I'm just going to make it a bit wider, just like that. Center it, center the text. And this is the layout that I am going to use for this app. Now we are going to have to con uh, connect the elements to our view controller file. I'm go just going to name them objects and I'm going to control drag, first of all, the text field in. So I'm going to name it text. I'm going to name it input. Then I am going to have my picker view, picker view. And then I'm going to have my output label, output, just like that. Now here are all the elements that we are going to need. Uh, so now we're going to head over to the view controller, but one thing before I forget it, let's do it uh, right now. Click on your picker view and then control drag it up to this uh, yellow button and then select data source. Do it one more time and then select delegate. This will allow us to interact with this picker view, which is something that we want to do in order to fill it with all types of interesting values. So now we are going to set up the picker view. That's going to be our first priority. And we do that by saying UI picker view delegate and UI picker view data source. And then we are going to uh, get all the functions that we need in order to get a picker view operational. And we start by saying um, creating picker view, just comment there so everything we see where all the elements are. Let's see, I'm also going to do that here. Getting data creating the picker view. So we are going to need four, four functions in order to make the picker view operational. We are going to need number of components, number of rows in, comp uh, let's see, number of, there we have it. It's the first one. And this just uh, returns how many sections we want in a row. And I'm going to say one, we don't need more. Uh, then I'm going to say number of rows which is going to be equal to uh, our currency, our amount of currency. So we're going to say return my currency dot count because we want one row for each currency. Then we also need the title for row, which is going to be uh, the, the text that is displayed in each row. And we're going to return my currency dot row or in right there and then we are going to need did select row um let's see did select row this basically gives us a hint each time the user has picked a new currency and we want of course to know which type of currency that is so we say we have to create a variable that always keeps track of which currency is the active one so we're going to say var active currency 
is equal to zero because we're really not inter interested in the name of the active currency we're only interested in the conversion value so we're going to say active currency is equal to my values and then row so this way we always update this uh, variable right here with the active currency and just make sure that you have defined this variable right here as a double so that no confusion is created so let's try to run this app and see that our pick of view is populated and everything is working as we want it to so not much happened here and that is probably because we need to do one more thing and that is scroll down here and then when everything is done uh, right here then we are going to say pick review dot reload all components so let's run it once again and now everything should work a bit better let's see and we need self dot pick review because we're operating within a closure so here we have our app and as you can see now everything is much better we have all our currencies and we have our label that is going to display our conversion value so the next step now is to enable our user to actually convert something and we start by let's see something that we forgot to do earlier head over to main.storeboard and we are going to create a function for our button so we're going to say button and then we are just going to control drag our button in there and I'm going to call it action and it's going to be an action and just click on connect and here is where all the magic is going to happen so now here we are going to take the input that our user has given us so we're going to say um, or we are actually just going to jump straight to the output so we're going to say output dot text is equal to our input dot text and we need to convert this to a double in order to be able to do some math with it because right now it's a string and we can't do much calculation with a string so we need to convert it to a double and then we need to multiply it with our active currency so this should basically basically be everything that we need and then don't forget to also say convert this to a string so now let's see if it has any problems with what we have done and we need to force unwrap it which which basically means we are saying that we're sure that the text that the user has inputted is convertible to a double and we probably also need to do this here in order to say that we're sure that this again or first of all we're saying that we're sure that there is some text there and then we're saying we're sure that they can be converted to a double and what we should probably do is check if the user has actually inputted something so we say if input dot text is not equal to nil only then are we going to run this code and that leaves us leaves us with one less uh, uh, error that we could get if the user hasn't inputted anything anything so let's try to run the app and now let's try to convert some euros into some dollars so here is our app and i want to convert let's say thousand euros into dollars so let's try to find the dollars and i know it should be 1.09 because i checked with google right before i made this tutorial so let's click on convert and that's the case 1092 and I can convert it to uh, run whatever that means convert it 4000 and great British pounds which should probably be no no clue 894.65 so here is your currency converter uh, that always is updated because it extracts data from the internet fresh and updated data from the internet now if you wanted to also uh, give the user the option to convert from uh, let's say another currency let's let's see pounds then you just have to do some maths you will have to pull out your math skills and you will have to uh, create a function or just 
uh, a way of converting you know great british pounds to all of the others of all of the other currency that you now have so uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video and i'm just going to go through it one more time just to make everything crystal clear and that is let's start from the, all the way from the top we have two arrays right here that the one keeps track of the currency the name only of the currency and the second array keeps track of the values of each currency then we also have a variable named active currency which keeps track of um, the active currency that the user is currently using then we have imported the input field the picker view and the output field and then we have created these functions in order to make the picker view operational then we also created an action that is tied to our button so each time our user clicks that button we are displaying the result then here we in order to get the fresh data we start a session based on this url we extract some data right here and then we convert it to an array a json array that we can work with we then convert it to a dictionary and then I don't know what this is this is probably something i wrote in order to test something and then here um i wrote we run through the dictionary in order to extract the different values and pass it to our arrays and then we reload all components uh, of the picker view when all of this is done and task.resume simply means that we start this browsing session so that's all there is to creating a fully functional awesome currency converter if you enjoyed this video make sure that you click the subscribe button so that you stay tuned for future tutorials and thank you for watching